Hello friends, this video on transport in plants part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson and now it is time to answer some of the questions. Just to check if you have understood the lesson well or not. So here comes question number one. What are porins? What role do they play in diffusion? I already spoke about porins, right? Porins are nothing but they are special type of porin, proteins which act as pores and that is why they are called porins. Pore is the word from which it has been derived. So what do, why, are they, why are they modified as pores? So that they can help in diffusion. So that they can help substances to be moved from outside the cell to inside the cell. Something like this. They are special type of proteins which facilitate passive transport. That is facilitated diffusion. They are large sized pores which are present in the outer membranes. Somewhat like this. If this is your membrane, this is a porin which has a pore which is like a pore. It is like a huge pore or a channel whatever you call it. So this particle, let us suppose this particle needs to be passed across the membrane. So this particle will enter into this pore and this porin will rotate itself and then release it on the other side. So this is how porin functions and how do they play a role in diffusion? This is how they play a role. They help in transporting substances across the membranes and it is used for those substances which cannot cross the membrane by itself because the membranes have a hydrophobic region in between. So some materials are hydrophilic in nature and that is why they cannot cross the membrane on their own. Let us look at the next question. Distinguish between diffusion and osmosis. As I mentioned before, osmosis is nothing but a type of diffusion. So diffusion is movement of molecules and ions along a concentration gradient. So from high concentration towards low concentration. And osmosis is movement of water along a concentration gradient. So when I talk about diffusion, it can happen in gases, liquids as well as solids. But osmosis is only about liquids, mostly water. In diffusion, we don't really need a semi-permeable membrane, that doesn't matter. But for, for osmosis, we always need a semi-permeable membrane, that is a membrane which selectively allows some substances to pass through it and doesn't allow some other substances. Question number three. Distinguish between transpiration and evaporation. So transpiration is again a type of evaporation but it is a special type of evaporation. When we talk about transpiration it is only the evaporative loss of water from the leaves of plant. But evaporation is a general process. It can happen anywhere. When you boil uh, a cup of water they, then also the some of the water evaporates in the form of water vapor. So that is evaporation. Transpiration again is also a form of evaporation. So when we talk about evaporation, it is a general process. It is a physical process which can occur from any surface, whether it is a living surface or a free living surface. Transpiration is more of a physiological process. That is, it is related to the life cycle of a plant. That is how it is physiological. So it depends on so many factors. For example, the number of stomata present on a leaf. If less number of stomata are there, the rate of transpiration will be less. So it depends on the structure and the nature of the leaf or the plant. But evaporation is a physical process. It entirely depends on the environmental condition. For example, uh, if there is a cup of water where, or it is a uh, huge bowl of water or, or if it is some other solution, that really doesn't matter. As long as the environmental conditions are favorable, as long as you provide enough temperature and enough energy for evaporation to take place, it will take place. Question number four, distinguish between osmotic pressure and osmotic potential. Sometimes these two terms are very confusing. People think they are the same, but they are not. When you talk about osmotic pressure, it is the minimum pressure needed to negate osmosis. As I was telling you, right, when the movement of water is taking place from region of high to low concentration. Now, if you want that movement to stop, what you can do, you can apply some pressure on one side so that the movement stops. So that pressure is a positive pressure and it stops osmosis. That is called osmotic pressure. Whereas osmotic potential, potential is always the ability. So it is the ability 
to take in water across a semi permeable membrane so it is basically the ability of water to move across a semi permeable membrane so osmotic potential is basically a negative pressure and osmotic pressure is a positive pressure so osmotic pressure always tries water tries to stop the osmosis and osmotic potential always tries to favor the osmosis that is it always tries to continue the process of osmosis so osmotic pressure increases with increase in solute concentration whereas osmotic potential decreases with increase in solute concentration why is that because when the solute concentration decreases what uh, increases what happens more and what more water keeps flowing into that region so when you apply a positive pressure it stops osmosis stops that is osmotic pressure but that potential which wants more and more water to flow into that region that is osmotic potential question number 5 distinguish between imbibition and diffusion so imbibition is again a special form of diffusion but imbibition is more about absorbing water by a solid with pores and such that when you absorb that solid there is an increase in volume or there is a kind of swelling for example when you uh, soak almonds almonds in water what happens overnight you see that the almonds tend to swell up because they have absorbed the water through the pores present on their surface whereas diffusion is nothing but movement of particles it can be solid liquid or gas across a concentration gradient question number 6 distinguish between guttation and transpiration now guttation what is guttation we we did not discuss about it anywhere in the lesson so let me just tell you what is guttation you would have often seen that early morning when you go to your garden and you try to observe the surface of the leaves or the surface of the stems you will see small tiny droplets of water here and there so those small amount of water which is released in the liquid form that is known as guttation whereas transpiration what is that it is nothing but when water is lost in gaseous form that is when water is lost as water vapor due to the presence of sunlight or any other thing which provides the energy required to do this is called transpiration so in guttation water is released in liquid form whereas in transpiration it is released in gaseous form guttation occurs under low evaporation condition so you don't really need the evaporation condition like high temperature or something you don't really need them for transpiration you need the similar evaporation conditions so whatever things you need to boil water to evaporate it similar conditions are required for transpiration to take place guttation occurs through vein endings of leaves whereas transpiration occurs through stomata so that loss of water happens through stomata but this small droplets of water which you see they are generally towards the vein endings like if this is your leaf so you have veins like this right so towards the vein endings you often see droplets of water so you can observe it for yourself during early morning or so question number 7 briefly describe water potential what are the factors affecting it so as i mentioned to you before also that water potential is a very important concept so what is it it is the ability of water to move from one region to another so water potential is a measure of tendency of water to move from one region to another it is denoted by psi w where w denotes water generally expressed in units of pressure like pascals kilopascals or bars when you talk about the factors which affected there are two factors which affected that is solute potential and pressure potential when you add more and more solute the water potential decreases when you add more and more pressure potential that is a mechanical pressure then water potential increases so water potential is determined by solute potential and pressure potential now at atmospheric pressure at atmospheric pressure the pressure potential is zero and that is why water potential is equal to solute potential but when the pressure is increased beyond the atmospheric pressure the pressure potential increases so psi p comes into picture then question number 8 
What happens when a pressure greater than the atmospheric pressure is applied to pure water or a solution? I think I already answered it in the previous question. Now, just now I mentioned that water potential is equal to solute potential plus pressure potential. Now, at atmospheric pressure, water pot this pressure potential is zero because it is atmospheric pressure. So, no additional pressure is getting applied. So therefore, water potential is equal to solute potential. So now when you apply a pressure greater than the atmospheric pressure, in that case, the psi p also comes into picture. Therefore, the water potential will increase. So if we assume that the water potential of pure water is zero, the water potential after a pressure potential is after a pressure greater than atmospheric pressure has been applied would be a pos some positive value. So water potential of the solution would definitely increase, right? See, there are some of the important things which uh, need to be given special attention in this lesson. I don't know how far I have been able to explain them. For example, the concept of solute potential and pressure potential. That is very, very important. You should not get confused. If you want, you can have a recap of those slides. Again, the next thing that is very important is the transpiration pull, the concept of transpiration pull and the concept of pressure flow hypothesis. So these three, four things are uh, the key concepts to understand in this lesson. So please pay more attention there and in case you have any doubts, you are free to ask them. So this was all about uh, this lesson on transport in plants. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.